Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on where you are in the world. This is Gloria White, and I am coming to you from Utah, USA. Now, I'm going to do the next study on the book of Revelation. A lot of us are realizing we are in the end times. And a lot of us have never read Revelation. And a lot of us have been told it's not important. It is important. And we are going to read it together. And we are in the end times. And I did a video, my last Bible video I did, was Matthew chapter 24, Mark chapter 13, and Luke chapter 21. Now, those are Christ's words written down by Matthew, Mark, and Luke. They are part of the four Gospels. John would be the fourth Gospel in the New Testament. And they're the first four books in the New Testament. Now, when you are going to read Revelation, there's something very important you need to understand, or the whole thing just won't fit together right for you. And that is 2 Peter 3.8. So you need to know this before we begin. Peter this is the Apostle Peter, verse 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Now what that means is, one day with the Lord is a thousand years with us. Now, a lot of you already know what the thousand-year reign is. It's the millennium. That's when Christ will be here teaching. And Satan will have been locked away, but he will only be locked away for five months, at which time he will be released to see if he can pull anyone away from Christ away from God. And those of you who know, know that once you've given your life to, to God and you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you may fall away, but he'll take you back if you truly repent, repent in your heart. And if you're in God's hands, Nobody can snatch you away unless you let them, unless you are deceived. Now, we know that the great deceiver is Satan. He was a liar from the beginning and a murderer. So, um, just be aware of those things. Now, in Revelation, um, Christ is going to address the seven churches. Now these were the seven churches that existed in in um, Christendom when it first began. And Christ is talking to these churches. And he is telling them what is good about what they're doing and what is not good about what they're doing. What they can do to improve. Things that they're... Um, that they're um, maybe um, poor, like in earthly goods, but they are rich in the spirit. So I want you to pay attention when Christ is talking to these churches. He's talking to all of us. He's telling all of us a great thing. Now, chapter 1 in the revelation of Jesus Christ. 
the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, or quickly or swiftly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record or bore witness of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written herein for the time is at hand. Remember, one day with the Lord is a thousand years with us. Verse 4. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come. And from the seven spirits which are before his throne. Let's see if we can decipher the um, seven spirits. And that would be in Isaiah 11, 2. One second, I'll go there. I'm back. Okay, now we are in Isaiah, in the Old Testament, in the King James Version of the Holy Bible. In chapter 11, verse 2. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. This, and here are the seven spirits. And this is what I need. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding. The Spirit of counsel and might. The, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And shall make him a quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor, and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. Now you can find that in Isaiah chapter 11, start at verse 2 through 4. I'm going to be doing a lot of this because the scripture is backed up. It backs itself up. Now, many of you don't know that, but it does. And you can look it up in your Bible yourself. Um, okay. Verse 5. Now this is a prophecy fulfilled. And from Jesus Christ. Oh, baby, no. I, mommy can't play now. What are you doing? You're destroying everything. Oh, baby. Are you so bored? You must insist that mommy play with you. Always when I am doing Bible study, this dog <laughs> thinks... I should be at her beck and call. Now, I don't know why, but she brings me this ball when I am doing Bible study. And any other time, I can be doing anything else under the sun. But when I am doing Bible study, I get this in my lap over and over and over. So forgive us. But, and that's why the camera just got knocked over. Because my baby, are you okay? Insist that mommy play with her. What? Oh, not on the Bible. Not, not on the Bible. You know, not on the Bible. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There's Annie. Yes, you're the good girl. Give it to me. All right, I guess we'll, we'll just try to go on from where we were because it's too much to go back. Let's see. 
So this is a prophecy fulfilled in chapter 1, verse 5. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead or born of the dead. And, and, and the prince or ruler over of the kings of the earth upon him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To be, to him be glory and dominion for ever and ever. Amen. Now, the prophecy fulfilled, we can go back and break that up and look it up in the previous books. Now, the part and from Jesus Christ, then, who is the faithful, and that we can find in John 8, 14. Okay, so now we're in chapter 8 in the book of John, and verse 14. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record or witness of myself, yet my record is true. For I know whence I came and whither I go, but ye cannot tell whence I come and whither I go, because ye judge after the flesh or according to the flesh. I judge no man, and yet if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I am the Father that sent me. Okay, so now, back to verse 5, the prophecy, and then witness and the first begotten, oh, oh witness and the, and the, so the next part is witness, and that we can find in Isaiah 55, 4. Isaiah 55, 4. Behold. I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and a commander to the people. Now, back to Revelation verse 5, the next part of the prophecy. First begotten of the dead, and that we can find in Psalms 89:27 and Colossians 1:8. 18. Let's go there. Now, 89 Psalms 89, 17, it says, For thou art the glory of their strength, and in thy favor our horn, or our strength, shall be exalted. Now, Colossians. Colossians 1, 18. Now, this is the part of the prophecy that says, The prince of the kings of the earth unto him. So that's in Colossians 1, 18. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things that he might have the preeminence. Preeminence. Okay, and now the um, the next part that loved us, and we can find that in Revelation. Let's see, let me double check. And he loved us. No, let's see. The next part is. The prince of the the prince of the kings of the earth unto him. So that one is in Revelation seventeen fourteen. Seventeen fourteen. And as you can see I have studied Revelations. 
<clears throat> my Bible is falling apart. But that's not a bad thing. I want to double check that I read the right one. 1714. These things, these shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called the chosen and faithful. So that's Revelation chapter 17, verse 14. Now, okay. And the next part is that loved us. And we can find that in John 13, 34. All right, we're in the New Testament in the book of John in chapter 13, verse 34. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. And we could sure use a lot more of that around in our world today, don't you think? Okay. Back to Revelation 1. Okay. And we're still in verse 5. And we are confirming the words in this prophecy. By going to these different books in the Bible, it backs itself up. And the next part is, And washed us from our sins in his own blood. And we can find that. In Hebrews 9.14. Hebrews 9.14, which is backing up. And washed us from our sins in his own blood. So, Hebrews 9.14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot or blemish to God, plurge or cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. So when you have accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you follow his teachings, you are serving the living God. You no longer serve the things of this world, nor the ruler of this world. So, we're continuing now in Revelation chapter 1, verse 6. And hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. He has made us kings and priests unto God. Verse 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds. And every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds or nations of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. Now who's going to be wailing? Is it going to be the ones that have accepted salvation and Christ as their Lord and Savior? Do you think they're going to be wailing when he comes? No. We're going to be rejoicing. Those that are not saved will be wailing. Now this is Christ speaking in, in verse 8. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. I, John who also am your brother and companion in tribulation. We are in constant trials here on this earth. We are being tried, and we can be successful if we allow Christ and God to strengthen us. And in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, or in the, um, let's see, 
in the um, perseverance, if we persevere in Jesus Christ, was in the aisle. Okay, let me start that over. I, John, okay, the apostle that, that was given this revelation, who also am your brother and companion in tribulations, in tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Verse 10, I was on the spirit, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as a trumpet. Now the Lord's day is the beginning of the millennium. John is standing and looking from the millennium. He is like there, seeing all these things he's going to tell us about. And I will tell you um, when Christ is speaking. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as a trumpet saying, and this is Christ speaking, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, unto Smyrna, unto Pergamos, unto Thyatira, unto Sardis, unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. Now, this is... This is um, John writing, verse 12. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks, or lampstands. Now, we can look that up in Exodus 25, 37. Okay, he saw the lampstand, golden lampstands. And here in Exodus twenty five thirty seven, and thou shalt make the seven lamps thereof, and they shall light or arrange the lamps thereof, that they may give light over against it, in front of it. Here in Exodus. Like in the very beginning of the Bible. They're talking in the last book in the Bible about these lampstands. And then, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, or lampstands, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. Now this is a, a band that's around the chest. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned or were refined in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp, two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. Looked pretty strong. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Now this is Christ speaking. Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Write these things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. 
Let me read that again because this is very important. This is what Christ is telling John to write. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, which thou sawest are, oh, and the seven candlesticks which thou saw are the servant seven churches. Well, I kind of stumbled over that because I couldn't qu quite see it where I had my magnifying glass. So let me read that again. Verse 20. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches, which means that there will be the lampstands are before him at all times, which means that as the church has grown from these seven original churches, to all the churches around the world, they are before God, and they are watching. They're watching. That's why they're before God, so he can see. Okay, we're going to, um, we're going to stop here, and I'm going to pick up in chapter 2 on the next, next video. And I'm going to just keep going for as long as I can keep going. And then whenever I stop for the day, I will start again until we get all the way through the book of Revelation because it's important. I love you.